I'm going to have a look at the mug organizer project now and this one uh, comes in four pieces so you cut all four pieces from the panel I've had a little bit of a head start on this one uh, just because um, it's easier to uh, show what the outcome is rather than try to explain it step by step so um, you've got your backing piece which is the white one you've got your front piece and then you've got two sets of pockets this panel that's already attached that's the outer edge pocket and this panel here is the inner pocket now they are all labeled on there so you should be able to um, know which one's which pretty easily so the outer pockets which have already attached um, these ones have got actually eight divisions in them and the inner pocket has got four but they all attach exactly the same way so I'm just going to turn this the other way around and show you how we're going to go ahead and do this so um, on your panel you've got little marks on the bottom now you can't quite see them on here but you'll definitely be able to see them on yours and what you're going to do is actually line up those marks with the edge of your panel now you can see the panels for the pockets are longer than the panel for the base now that's because obviously we want some space to put things in our pockets so uh, I'm going to pin the center in place and then to create the four pockets I've got a mark down here and I'm going to just fold that across and leave that excess just sitting up for the time being so let me just pin that one in place as well and then you're going to do the same with the other side and the same on the ends so you're taking up all of that excess fabric into the same width as the backing piece once that's all pinned in place you're going to go ahead and stitch up either side and up each of these places where it creates a pocket so each side of the pocket you're going to stitch that as well so what you'll end up doing is creating all these kind of raised pieces once you've done that you need to flatten them out to create pleats but what i'll do is i'll stitch these in place first so you can see how it looks and then we'll show you how to create the pleats once you've got the edges and in between those pockets sewn in place the next step is to flatten that excess fabric out so i've taken these to the ironing board and just you can see there that's the excess fabric on the top i've actually just kind of run my finger along both edges till i get to the center and then once i've got to the center i've just pushed the bubble that's in the middle down flat and then just press those into place now you can either press them like these ones into kind of try and try and get a dart type um, pleats or you can do square ones like the ones on the top here or now the bottom uh, to make box pleats so how you make the pleats is up to you you just need to take in that excess fabric and to squash it flat and to press it uh, once you've got those in position I do advise just putting a row of stitching along the bottom here because when you come to assemble it it is going to make your life an awful lot easier so um, I'll put that stitching in in just a second but then the next step is to add the ties so um, at this stage it's a really good idea to just bring your mug back in and just test it because all of this is going to go on the inside all of this is going to go around the outside remember you're gonna it looks like there's too much fabric now but you are going to lose a little bit because you're going to have to have your uh, seam allowances on either side so that'll tighten back in quite nicely and the excess that I've got at the top here obviously I'm going to lose that within the seam allowance down at the bottom there so don't worry that there looks too much fabric at the minute once you've put that final seam allowance on that will go but what you're looking for at the minute is where you want those ties because ideally you want one of your ties to come underneath the handle here and you want one of your ties to come in between the handle there so you've got something to kind of pull against and you've got something to secure it in place so um, I'm going to just put a little pen mark on each of them um, obviously bear in mind that you are going to lose your kind of quarter inch seam at the bottom there so just bear that in mind when you put your placements on and then you can mark those ready for your ties so I'm only going to mark one side and then what I will do is I will transfer those same marks onto the other side because I want two ties on here and two ties on here so I can tie them in a bow so I will remove my mug and pop that back down 
Now to make your ties, there's um, some of this tape within the package that you're going to get within the Fabazine bundle. And all I've done is uh, double roll the edge and then just stitched across the top to keep those in place. Now, because they are quite fiddly, what I would recommend is if you're trying to stitch these on a machine, let me just use the other end of this to show you. Uh, obviously fold it once, fold it a second time. You may have to move your needle or your foot to make sure that you get um, the feed dogs under this edge as well as this side and you've got the space to stitch there as well but what I tend to do is just put a pin in now stitching over pins never a great idea but in this instance it's kind of necessary because what you need is you need that extra piece on the side to be able to manipulate it as you move it through the machine let me just bring the machine in and quickly show you so if I just put the machine there and I pop this into position if I want to get it under that foot I'm having to take it all of the way across to be able to get in touch with those feed dogs and then when I drop that foot and I drop the needle I've got this pin on the side to be able to help me guide it through the machine so that's really really handy tip so I'm just adding the ties in now so we can attach it to the mug so I've done this side and pinned those in place I'm just doing the other side now as well so I'm looking for the marks that I've put on when I've tested it out and just pinning those into place um, and then we are going to add the backing on so we can then sew all the way around and have our almost finished mug tidy so once these are in place this last one I'm just pinning here you need to make sure that these are in before you sew the back on because otherwise you're going to have to unpick to, to get them in and you need to keep them tucked in away from those edges so you don't catch them as you're showing, sewing round Obviously, you do need to catch these edges and these edges because that's what will hold them in place. So now I'm going to get my backing and I'm going to pop that on the top. Go ahead, line up all those edges and I would advise marking or pinning on the inside because what, these will be the inside pockets, the pink ones. So leaving a gap on the base of the inside to... Um, tuck in and finish it off because that means that you won't see it because it will be in the inside of the mug so I shall go ahead pin this stitch around it and then come back to you when it's ready to turn out now I've sewn all the way around the edge the next step is just to remove any excess from the sides and just take the bulk out of these corners before we turn it right side out so I'm just going to snip these off and when you uh, leave the gap at the bottom, leave, make sure you leave it in the middle of a side rather than at a corner because then you um, will get, end up with better corners and a much easier job turning it. So let's get rid of all those bits and pop this right side out. And pop it through a corner at a time. And it's important to do, oh, one thing I don't think I did mention is when you do the pockets on all of these, it's definitely worth going um, back and forth, you know, uh, reverse stitching over the tops of the pockets just to make sure they're that little bit stronger. So I am going to flip this right side out. I'm going to quickly take it to the ironing board and give it a quick press and then I will bring it back. And we will do the final step, which is the top stitch around the edge. So you can see it's taking shape there. It's going to take me a second or two just to pop that right side out. We are going to uh, just press that to make sure it's nice and flat. And then just run a tiny top stitch along the outer edge all the way around. And that will do two things. It'll stop these edges from rolling like they're doing, but it will also allow us to seal up that gap that was left in the bottom so I'll give this a press and I'll get it ready for top stitching and then I will be back to show you the next step we're in the final stages of this and I'm just adding a, a layer of top stitching around the edge here now one of the things you need to be a little bit careful of is where you've got these pleats um, you and you've got it folded over into the the backing there you're going to be going through uh, two, four, six, maybe eight, 12 layers in some places. So just take your time um, and just, you might need a, a little bit of a hand feeding the fabric through with the feed dogs there because you have obviously got quite bulky pieces. 
once you've gone all of the way around i've got a little bit left to do just around this corner once you've gone all the way around then your mug tidy is done so i'll finish this off and then i'll pop it on the mug So we're ready to add the um, tidy to the mug now and the way that this goes on is it just literally wraps over so this portion with the pink uh, pockets will go on the inside the portion with the um, kind of trees on that's on your outside and then as we mentioned about these ties earlier they are designed to go nice and tight under each of those handles now I've put plenty on these ties so you can tie them in a bow and you can get them on and off if you need to. So if you just uh, pop those into a little bow. Now once, as we measured them earlier, one's decided to go under the, designed to go under the top of that handle. And then this one is designed to go under the handle right at the bottom there. And what that will do is it will stop it riding up for you when you've got your bits and pieces in. So that is the last step. It is all tied on there. And then it's just time to load it up. <laughs> 